Now that we've established a very plausible basis for who designed The New Yorker, we must also look into how it may have been financed. Bo, you'd be hard pressed to find acknowledgement of it today. Tesla's groundbreaking inventions had made him an independently wealthy man in his day. However, much of what he was designing did not exist before he invented it, meaning he had to pour vast sums of money into building on-site factories that could produce all the parts needed for his equipment and labs where he could assemble it and test it. So when it came time to finance the New Yorker, Tesla would require outside funding that funding very likely came out of the budget of U.S. military intelligence. The original cost of the New Yorker was quoted at $8 million, and the final bill was more than $22 million, which leads us to why the New Yorker was built. The blueprints for a more sophisticated form of time travel had been given to Nikola Tesla, but he would need to experiment with his two magnifying transmitters to fully develop it. The end result of his work was the New Yorker Hotel, which in effect was a next generation magnifying transmitter. Nikola used this more robust technology to travel into the past find a younger version of himself, and bring that version back with him to this timeline. This younger version was then moved to the Cheyenne Mountain Complex in the early 60s, where he and our military got right to work building the device that would be generating a worldwide resonant standing sound wave also known as the last trump for the final phase of the plan to save the world. This is another of the series entitled Vignettes of Early Radiation Workers sponsored by the Bureau of Radiological Health. These consist of unrehearsed interviews with scientists working mostly in fields that impinge upon the applications of ionizing radiation to diagnostic and therapeutic radiology. From uh, Polly, you went then to MIT to uh, pursue your graduate work. Yes, I did. There were, was an intervening two years. While I was instructor at Polly, I studied physics at Columbia University. Uh -huh and uh, got the master's degree there. Now, when you uh, went to MIT, I believe your original intentions, if they may be so described, was to go into uh, electric power types of applications. Is that right? I came there primarily to become a, a good designer of high power electrical machinery. Uh, however, in the process of uh, looking for a doctorate's thesis, I selected a, a suitable topic in my area and went to see Vannevar Bush. Mm -hmm. Bush uh, heard me on my problem. And then he said, you ought to go and see Van de Graaff. He has just arrived at MIT from Princeton and he has some wild ideas. And I abandoned uh, the design of electric machinery 
and uh, began studying uh, the insulation of high voltages in vacuum right. and the acceleration of heavy particles to high energies. He was brought to MIT after producing a model which went up to a million volts. Mm -hmm. Actually, they were two half million volt generators looking at each other. This was a huge double electrostatic generator with spheres which were 15 feet in diameter set on a textilite pedestal 25 feet high. Two huge machines. One was to run positive and the other negative. John G. Trump played a key role in the plan. While serving in the military, leading the development of new top secret radar equipment, John G. Trump gained officer level access to connections within the military intelligence community. John G. was able to use these connections to ensure that the younger version of Nicola would be able to fulfill his role from inside the Cheyenne Mountain Complex. This protection was necessary both for Tesla and his technology. When you have the big picture that the New Yorker was a more sophisticated form of time travel that allowed Nikola to traverse different timelines and interact with a younger version of himself, $22 million was a small price for our military to pay for humanity's freedom.